Hey, what's up guys? Kind of conservative engineer, aka PE exam poppy. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody calls me that. But let's just do a quick beam problem that you will probably get something like this in your PE civil exam in the morning, the part A. Because regardless of what discipline you take in the afternoon, everyone takes the same morning part if you're taking the PE civil. Now, you will definitely get a question on bending moments. I can guarantee you that. Like, um, trust is bending moments. Uh, beam loading, they'll probably ask you what the maximum bending moment is, uh, what bending moment diagram looks like, what. So let's just do something uh, similar that uh, you'll probably see in your PE exam. So here is a basic beam scenario that I drew up on Microsoft Paint. It took me forever because I'm not really good at this application. But we have a beam simply supported. Uh, it's a, a pin and a roller connection. I threw a point load of 600 pounds here and also a distributed load of 20 pounds per foot. Now, they can ask you what is the maximum bending moment. And um, there's a lot of ways to do it. Everybody has their own way. Uh, there's uh, equations in your steel manual that will give you bending moments for different loading cases. And you can probably superimpose them and get it. Um, what most people will probably resort to is the bending moment diagram. Now, let's do the bending. Well, I mean, let's do like a general bending moment diagram, right? how it would look if you were to actually do the bending moment. Now, I didn't solve this with with the bending moment. I'll tell you why. Um, bam, and shoot, what is this? It's two dots here. All right, uh, so we'll do, remember, we're gonna do the way that I think most people would tackle this. So you have your shear and moment. So in order to actually do this the uh, this way, what we are gonna have to do is Solve for the reactions and then solve, well, do your diagram. So this one, I'm guessing it's going to go up. Okay, it's going to go here. 600 pounds is a lot, so it's going to probably go below the zero. And then it's going to shoot like this because it's distributed load. And then this reaction is going to take it back to zero. And your moment will probably look like this. Okay, it's going to be linear here. And uh, where's the brush? and kind of like this squiggly parabolic thing over here. Now, you can see that your maximum bending moment, well, you can't really see here, but disregard this uh, for my bad drawing. Your maximum bending moment is kind of gonna, you know what, let me make it simpler. How about that? Maybe? Uh, your maximum bending moment is gonna be here. You can also tell just by it, most of the, uh, the loading is the intensity of this load, all this pressure is going to be at this point. So your maximum loading is going to be here, maximum moment. Now, the question is, what is it? So I think this way takes a little too long because you literally have six minutes of problem. What I would do is take a section cut. Now, how do you do a section cut method is you do a section cut right here, right? Because this is where the maximum moment is. So that you kind of have to know from statics where the maximum moment is. So I'm going to do a section cut at this point. Now, when you do a section cut analysis, you can either look at everything to the right or to the left. Now, honestly, why would you look at the right when there's so much going on? You have a point load, distributed load, and a reaction. I'm going to look at everything on the left because there's only one thing I got to deal with. So for a section cut, though, just we never take a section cut at the point. We literally take it like as close as we can right so i'm going to take it right here because then what this does is this eliminates this point load and having to include the distributed load in the section cut so i literally took it right here which is a genius idea and we can still keep the two feet because it's it, you know this is probably 1.99999 but we're going to say it's two feet anyways so i'm going to redraw this this section cut as best as i can i'm probably going to screw this up completely uh let's do a little triangle for the um Oh, there you go. Uh, we'll do a reaction, All right? So this reaction is going to be, we're going to call this RA. So check it out. This section cut, we only have one thing to look at. So now when you take a section cut, right? Look right here. What happens is there's three things going on here that you actually have to draw. You're going to have to draw when you cut this, there's a moment, there is some sort of axial force, and there's also a shear force. Bam. So now the directions, that's completely up to you. Um, it's when you start doing your problems, it's, it's everything's going to work out. So I just do this as a 
general direction. So this is your axial force, this is your shear force, this is your moment. So anytime you take a section cut, you have to draw these, okay? Whether you're looking at right or left. So let's call this point, I don't know, point O. Make it easier, I guess. Make this black. Oh my God, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> there you go. All right, so now let's, okay, so all we have to do is find our A, basically. Um, so what do we do? We're going to go here, right, to this scenario to find our reaction. And so let's, uh, let's solve it out now. But remember, one of our equ uh, equations of equilibrium is the sum of all moments, right? Let's do, oh, wait, no, hold on, hold on. Oh my God, here. There you go. <laughs> I'm so, yeah, I'm very bad at this. Um, the sum of all moments is going to be zero at any given point. And I chose counterclockwise as positive. It doesn't matter what you choose. It's all going to work out at the end. So let's, uh, let's start doing it. Now I'm going to take, because since I want RA, I'm going to take the moments at RB. Because that way, um, when you take a moment about a point, all these forces are, they're irrelevant and they don't, count in the equation so we can cancel out the rb by taking it at point b so we are going to start our equation so zero all the moments at rb is zero and now we're going to get our uh, i guess like our moments so let's start our rb our first uh moment we're going to find is on the other side it's going to be ra times the distance right so we're going to go to ra now is it negative or positive so this is going up so if it's going up it's kind of going clockwise right follow the mouse it's clockwise so it's going to be negative because i chose counterclockwise as positive so negative we'll put in parentheses this is going to be ra because we don't know what the um value is and we're going to multiply it by the distance remember um moment or torque is just force times distance so this is actually eight six plus two is eight so bam now where is the next load from rb it's going to be this point load right here 600 pounds so we're going to go now, is this going, is this negative or positive? This 600 is going down. So if it's going down, it's kind of going clock, counterclockwise, right? Counterclockwise is positive. So we will uh, make this positive. We're going to make this bigger, man. Yeah. Now we'll put it in parentheses. So we have 600, which is our force. Now times distance. This is six feet right here. So six feet. Now we're done, right? Okay. Let's, uh, no, we're not done. Man, that was a trick question. Because what about this distributed load? So distributed load, you can actually make this into a point load. Now, to make this into a point load, again, you definitely learned this from statics. And if you didn't take statics, you should not be taking the PE exam. So distrib distributed load becomes a point load. And we're going to put it right in the middle. So at three feet mark. And uh, how do we do this is, well, is this positive or negative first? Remember, the loading is going down. So from RB, if you go anywhere on the distributed load, it goes down. It's counterclockwise. So it's positive. And... So how do you do this is you take the distributed load, which is 20, you multiply it by the total distance, which is six, the distance of the span. So that will give you the force. But now you have to multiply it by the distance of where that force is. That force is going to be smack in the middle, right? So that's three. So six divided by two is three. And that is your equation. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to manipulate this and you're going to put RA on the other side. You, you just solve this very, very quickly on the calculator and RA for what I got is 495 pounds. Yep. So now you have RA and you're pretty much, that's it. You just have one more equation. Now we're going to look at the section cuts. We know what RA is. So we're going to take our moments at point O. Okay. And remember when you take the moments at point O, any of the forces get canceled out. So this shear is irrelevant, this axial force is relevant, but this moment is still here, okay? So this moment, unfortunately, is still going to be here, but this is what we're solving for. So it's going to be, the we're going to go back to this, the sum of all moments is zero. So what we get is zero is going to be equal to, now what's the first um, force we have? We have RA, right? RA which is actually 495. So is this uh, positive or negative? This RA is going up, so it's going to go clockwise, which is negative. So negative 495. Well, you know, let's put these in parentheses. Times, what's the distance? Oh, I forgot to put the distance. What is the distance from this section cut? 
Remember, it's probably like 1.9999999, but we're going to take two. Okay, we're going to take two. We'll make our lives easier. Okay, and are we done? Well, we still need this moment here. Okay, this moment is what we're solving for. And this moment, well, is it positive or negative? This is counterclockwise, and this, I chose counterclockwise to be positive. So, there you go. Right? It's going to be a positive, and we'll just call this, I don't know, M0, right? No, I mean MO to make it simple. So now all we have to do is solve for this MO. And if you solve for this MO, you should get um, 990 foot pounds or pound foot, right? Whatever, whatever you prefer. And that is your answer right here. This, that's your answer. So. Um, just to reiterate, <laughs> all we did was take a section cut. And when you take a section cut, you have three things going on. You have this moment, uh, shear, and axial force. But when you take a moment about this point that we took the section cut at, the shear and the axial force cancels out. All you have to do is solve for the moment. And to do that, it requires solving for this force. So that is my way of doing it. And even though this video is probably going to hit 12 minutes, this if you this will probably take you about two minutes to do saving you four minutes that you could do something else and that's the whole point of the game is to save as much time as you can but yeah so that is um yeah a quick way to solve this problem but again you're free to do whatever you wish that's just my method it might help and yeah thank you uh, so much for watching the video and i hope this really helps i'll see you guys next time you guys have a nice day